So we successfully got some data from a remote endpoint, and this is my application right now, and I'll just reload the page to make sure it's the latest version, and I see I have an error. Oh, I have an H error where it doesn't belong. We'll fix that in a moment. But in any case, I can now retrieve some data and get a list. So what I'd like to be able to do next is to have these as links so that I can click on them and do something, whatever it may be. So how are we going to do that? And first, let me see what this error is. HR cannot appear as a dependent. Okay, that's easy enough. Let's go fix that. So back to our code and find this. We'll just change this P to a div and that should make that go away because you can't have an HR as a child of a P. So let's just save that, make sure it's working and I'll clear the screen, reload this. Perfect. Okay, so what I want to do now is to somehow have this list populated with all of the entries we're getting from our JSON and be a link. And you can start to see right away that because we're not writing simple JavaScript, we can't just build a string with the appropriate on-click handlers, the standard JavaScript on-click handlers, not the on-click with a capital C that we have in React because we're using JSX, so it becomes a little complex and it's not immediately apparent how you might do this. And fortunately, React has something called state. And when we use state, this becomes remarkably easy. So to start with, let's come up here and just use, just declare this, or write this line out, state equals, and I'm going to in curly brackets say posts, that's my key, and that will be equal to that. It's just empty. Now that, is a word that you need to become intimately familiar with, state. And you got to make sure you never declare your own variable called state. You just use the one that manages state in your React application. The fact that I've given this class that state and given it one key posts means that I can greatly simplify my code. For example, when we click that button and this fetch list function is called, this last part of the chain, the last then, that becomes a lot simpler. So what I can do is get rid of these two things because I'm not actually using them. And I no longer need this, this request to posts or this, this reference to posts, post list. I can get rid of that. And I no longer need to go through this entire for each in JSON. All I really need to put in here is this. This dot set state which is a function available to us from React. And I'm going to set the key of posts to be set to JSON. That's all I need to do. And that's a lot less code. I should put a semicolon there. Now I can come down to my post list part here. And this doesn't even need the ID anymore, so I can get rid of that. It's just cluttering up my code. And inside of that, I'm going to write a simple React directive. And it goes like this in curly brackets, this.state.posts, which I got to spell right, posts, and I'm going to call map. And of course, map is familiar to you if you've worked with JavaScript at all. And I'm going to put a, a variable C and point that to, in parentheses, and down on the next line. Here, I'll just write some JSX li, and I'm going to put this attribute on it, and I'll explain why in a moment. Key equals, and I'll just make that equal to c.id, which is straight out of our JSON file. And then I'll put an ahref equals hash bang, which means it doesn't go anywhere. And I'll put an on click handler here. On click is equal to, in parentheses, using our arrow syntax, this dot, and I'll just say, clicked item and handed a, a, an argument, c.id. Okay, and we'll make sure that function is done correctly in a moment. Then I'll close my opening a tag and here I'll just write the title, c.title. Okay, let's make sure that our clicked item function actually takes an argument. So I don't have a clicked function, let's create one. So clicked function, or clicked item I guess it was, clicked item is equal to, and this will take one argument, our arrow syntax, console.log clicked. And I'll pass the x as a second parameter to that, so it writes it to the console. Okay, 
So let's go through this. There's a couple of things that are new here. To start with, we have our state. And all I've done is define one thing in my state uh, object. And I can have as many keys as I want in there. Then I created a new function, which takes one argument, x, and just writes to the console, clicked plus whatever x is. And down here, in the ul, which a little while ago had an ID of post list or something like that, I'm ranging over or iterating over posts and we're using the dot map, which is built into JavaScript. Each iteration of the map will create a, or populate the variable C with the current value of that iteration. Then I have some standard JSX, which we're already familiar with. My on click handler is a little bit different though, because I'm actually using an arrow function and empty parentheses arrow and then this dot clicked item because I want to pass a parameter and I have to do that. I don't have access to this unless I use the arrow syntax and I just write the title in between the ahref. So let's try that and see what happens. So back to my web browser, and I will clear the console to make sure there's no errors in there. Reload this. So far, so good. Let's click Fetch Data and see what happens. And there is my list. Now I should be able to click on one of these and get something written to the console from my new clicked item function I just defined. And there it is, clicked one. And this should be a different one click three. Now, one other thing to note, back in our code, in this little JSX where I'm going through the posts using my map function, I have key equals and then a unique ID. And this is something that React really expects you to have there. For example, if I take this out and save this and go back to my web browser and clear the console and then fetch data, we'll get a warning. And the warning is, each child in a list should have a unique key property, and then it gives you a link to it, okay? It still worked, but you're going to have problems unless you leave this right in there. So the li, each entry in that ranging through the posts needs to have an attribute key somewhere, and that key needs to be unique for each entry. And of course, I have an ID coming in my JSON file, and I know that's unique, so I can use that. All right, so that is how we manage this. Now we'll just do one more thing here, just to show you that you can use state anywhere. Before my UL, I'm going to put a paragraph tag in, and I'm just going to say, in uh, drawing from my state, this.state.posts.length, which again is available to us just because of JavaScript, and I'll say items long. And I'll just put some word in here. So I'll say posts is there, and I'll save that. And when I go back, it should say posts is zero items long. But when I fetch data, because I'm using state, it won't just update the UL with a bunch of LIs. It'll also update this line of text. And now it says posts is 100 items long, and it took care of this. And that is what makes state so powerful and so convenient in React. All right. Let's move on and play with some more interesting things.